I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Blessed always be the name of the Lord. The Lord is I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. So surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my earthly life. And then I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
of the hour, the Reverend Dr. Carol Brown and Reverend Brad Fleming, and to the other ministers that's on the roster, to all of the deacon, deaconess, to this beautiful cloud of witnesses, and especially to Mary Robinson and this family, to all of you that makes up this family. Listen, we are here for a celebration. We don't do funerals at his room. We come to celebrate. And I don't know how well your relationship was with James, but I had a good relationship with James, and, and, and he was a celebrating type of man with an infectious smile. That's, that's what I knew about him. So we're here to celebrate. And Mary, I want to say this, and we're going to move on with this program. When I looked and saw 57 years, and you got it right. To death, do your part. To death, you can look in the mirror and say, we made it. We made it. That's the way God wants us to end a marriage. To death. Do your part. Well done. Well done. Amen. Quickly, I want everyone who's able to stand to your feet with the exception of the family. And let's give God a rounding applause and tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. For James Robinson. Tell him thank you. Jane Robinson. Amen. 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 Tell him thank you for James. Thank you for James. Deacon James Robinson. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 We have a printed program and we've got to go down the road, so we're going to do what we need to do. And I want to thank on behalf of uh, the ministerial staff. Thank Israel Baptist Church for the way that you show up and support. And the one thing that we have to recognize that Pastor Smith put emphasis on us being there for each other. No big eyes and little U's. And here we are. They're here, Mary. Israel is in the house to let you know that we got your back. Amen. Amen. Before we move on so that everybody can feel safe. Everybody got your shot, right? Great, 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 great. Now you can relax a little bit. Amen. 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 According to the printed program, we're going to have a, a from the mayor course, and I'm going to ask them to please come on up and form to my right, right here. The selection from the mayor course in order for us to just expedite things and move on so we can get on the road because we want to give Reverend Robinson the time that he needs with this eulogy. After the mail course would have come and did a selection, we're going to have the reading of description from Reverend Brad, I mean, the Old Testament and the New Testament by Reverend Dr. Carol Brown. 
and I will come back with the prayer. At this time, we're going to do a selection. And y'all help us with this because this was Jane's favorite group. Jane didn't sing with nobody but us. No, he, he loved the male chorus. And he was faithful with the male chorus. Amen. 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 Sing, guys. Hallelujah.
Church, say amen. 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 Let's have church today because that is what James would want. Amen. Amen. You can see why he loves singing with this group. Praise the Lord. Reverend. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. To this family, my prayer is that there will be some comfort in these words. Yes, Lord. That will carry you over for the days to come. God bless you all. From the book of Psalms, the 27th chapter.
Let us now go to the thought of grace to the only one that is able to help this. Let us pray. Our Father, we come now. Lord, help be totally in disarray, totally confused. In other words, messed up. If I didn't know it, that had not been for you on our side. Where would we be? Oh God, I come now on behalf of this wife, Mary, these children, yeah. grandchildren, this family, oh God, this family, lifting them up to you. Help them to know that you're too wise of a God to make a mistake. Help them to know that you will not take anything from us that you don't replace. In other words, oh God, help them to know that as believers, we got a building not made by hand. So when this life is over, we got another place with the eternity. Oh God, I come now. Thank you for Deacon James Robinson. Thank you, oh God, for his life. Yeah. Thank you for his legacy. Yeah. Thank you, oh God, for his contribution. Yeah. But we recognize that he had to do something right for the house to be filled like it is. He touched lives with that infectious smile, with that personality. Oh God, you used him in your own way. Oh God, I, I recognize for 57 years that surely every day wasn't hallelujah day, but you've been right there. And I find out for myself, oh God, that when we put you in the middle, regardless of what we go through, you are able to bring us out. Thank you, oh God, for the ups and for the downs. And when I recognize that it had not been for the downs, we wouldn't be who we are. Oh God, thank you now for being such a good God to all of us. Now we ask that you will have your way in this place today. Use whomever you choose that you will be glorified. Help us all to get our house in order because we too will be called summoned one day we know not when and not where and oh god i found out that i don't have to be in the hospital for you to summon me. help us to get it right help us oh god to love one another while we got a chance take the pride away when we make mistakes got too much pride to admit it help i feel all right and it don't take much for me at this time, we're going to have reflections. And the program calls for reflection for two minutes. Travis E. Ross in the sun is an exception for you, so you, you do what the Holy Spirit did. You do. But as for the rest of them, Y'all can do what I did. Y'all got two minutes. <laughs> let's, 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 let's have church in here, y'all. Because that's the way my brother was born. Yeah. Amen. The son of this time.
and he loved doing what he loved to do. And now, I just want him to know that I'm going to be here to take care of the queen, my yes. mother. And all of y'all, if you need me, I'm here. And give some of the wisdom that he passed along to me. Because I know I see him now fishing in heaven. I see him now trying to find the best place to eat. But I know he got one of the angels putting the bait on his, on his rod because he ain't going to do that. But he will catch all the fish. So I would like to say I love you all. We have a strong family. We have, you know, a family that prays together, stays together. He instilled in me the most. And one thing I know that he taught me when I was very little, Psalms 23. And I use that everywhere I go. Even in my journeys in the Navy and everywhere I go. I reflect on that. You have to reflect, sit still, and think your thoughts. And select your thoughts. So thank you. Amen. The, the remaining of you, Deacon Purvis, I think, would you all use the mic to, the, to my left or right here on the floor? Amen. Deacon Purvis, our chairman. To Reverend Shelton, to Reverend Rollinson, all the other ministers on the roster, God bless you. To this family, uh, my prayers are with you. I met Reverend uh, Deacon Robinson some time back, uh, I guess through his insurance business and I, of course, being in the funeral business. Deacon Robinson was sort of a quiet fella, but it didn't negate his strength. He was a tall fella, sort of a large fella, but it did not negate his compassion. As Reverend uh, has said earlier, he had that infectious smile that I knew him by. I really got a chance to really sit down and talk to him. We were on a uh, session together. We had gone to a church to do a pre-need session. I did the funeral home part. He did the insurance part. A lot of questions that he answered that uh, I was really surprised at and that he really fulfilled and kept those uh, things going. So. Uh, we had a chance to talk, so I got to meet him then. But he and Sister Robinson always, you never, ever saw them uh, not smiling. Amen. Just had a quick smile, just had a quick pleasant, pleasant looking all the time. So I want to say to Ms. Robinson, just keep your head up. He was here today, he had some physical challenges over the last few years. Uh, but he would probably say to you that time for my departure is at a hand. So I fought a good fight. So just know that he did fight, this fight, fight the fight of faith. And uh, uh, he's going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Just keep your hand, all the family, just keep your hands in God's hands. And I assure you, he'll see you through. We're here for you, whatever it is that we can do as a deacon board, as a church, or anything I can do for you personally, just feel free to just let us know and we'll do everything we can and uh, to uh, fulfill that that we can do. God bless and keep you as I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Purvis. Our uh, friend, Mr. Jesse Carter, is going to come at this time. Um, is that Reverend John Smith I see back there? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Our pastor's brother, Reverend John Smith, I just wanted to acknowledge you. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Good morning. First, I'd like to give honor to God who's the head of my life, to the ministers on the roster. 
I would like to say to the Robinson family, who I've known over 35 years, and I never felt, felt love like I love about the Robinson family in my life. You all have embraced us, and I thank you, Mary, and the family. My friend, my coworker, my manager, and my father, who treated me like a father. And just like Trap, he treated me the same way. And he was a godfather to my children. And when I talk about godfather, and father figure, him and Mary was there for us for over 35 years. And when the pastor said a while ago, he always had a bright smile. You ain't gonna never meet a positive person in Jane Ross. One instant, I ain't gonna be short. He taught me to be positive. I was talking to him one day, and he cut me off short. I didn't know why. The next day, he called me, he said, Chief, you know what I did yesterday? I said, yeah, Jay, I wonder how. He said, what did I teach you? To be positive all the time. And I would cherish that for the rest of my life, being positive and being a role model. Yes, sir. And I thank my son some three weeks ago, my older son, he said, Daddy, I want to do something for Father Day for you and God, Daddy. And he gave, had, took us to a family Father Day brunch. And we were able to laugh and talk with each other, have fun like always, because he was so positive. He was so loving, person. Yeah. Yeah. And lastly, maybe, and the family, I want to let y'all know, I'm here. I'm not going nowhere until God called me home. Whatever the call the family can do for you, please let us know, because the day don't end. Until Jr. until I meet you again. Another thing you taught me, we was prospecting. And he said, I was asking, I was telling him, borrow your pen. He said, okay. He didn't say nothing then. But soon we got to the car, he said, Chief, let me tell you something. This is your weapon. Don't never leave home without it. <laughs> he told me this, and I never leave home without it. To Mary and the family, I want to thank y'all for the opportunity for giving a chance to talk among my friend, my coworker, my manager, my father, and the godfather of my children. I thank you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. This is your weapon. And this will mess you up, too. <laughs> It'll mess you up. Truth is told. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We got one other, William, with a Newark family. Newark family. They're coming right now. Amen. God bless you. Amen. James, please. Amen. Good morning, church. Uh, James and I, have, I've probably known James more than, longer than anybody in here. Uh, James is my cousin. And we live right down the road, a piece from each other. And uh, we grew up playing with each other. Uh, I'm, uh, probably around seven years old when we first started, you know, we were able to get away from home. Uh, we would, James place and our place joined and right at the corner, we, we had what we called a corner post. And Jane would come to that post, and he would get on the post, he'd stand up on the post, and, and we'd have a little call for each other to meet us. We would never call each other by name, but we would just say, eek, eek. That was all we'd say, eek. And when I heard that little call, two minutes later, I see James coming. And the same thing, he would, he would do the same thing to me, you know. Uh, I, I would I would do the call, but James did James did one other thing. In case I missed that call, James would start singing. I don't know how you join this group here. <laughs> James could not sing then, boy. <laughs> it, it was it was a group back then called the Coasters, I think. And the Coasters had a song called uh, "Mary Had a Baby." When James got on the post, he said. <laughs> but I, I, I knew Jay, when, whenever I heard the call, when I heard that little eek, or when I heard James singing, he was waiting on me to, me, me to get there. And so, you know, we, we grew up uh, probably, uh, probably around 13 or 14, we start, uh, our, fam our parents started to teach us to drive. And so when we, when we started driving, we would, 
uh, we would talk to each other about who was the best driver. Uh, he would brag and I would brag. And then around, I guess around 16 or 17, my father had a little 55 Chevrolet. And James and I, we would, uh, I talked my dad into letting us have the car. And so James and I, we started going out. We go down in Twin City, we go down in Meadow Statesburg, in every place, and you know, we're just kind of running around. And uh, we did that, I guess, maybe a month or two. And all of a sudden, Jane, only place James wanted to go, he wanted to go to Meta. <laughs> I said, James, let's go down to Statesboro. Let's go down to Statesboro. There are more women in Statesboro than there is in Meta. But he wanted to go to Meta. And it wasn't long after that, he said, Jack, I want you to drop me off over to somebody's house over here. I said, okay, no problem. I said, but let's go to Statesboro next week. He said, okay. Next week you come, drop me off in Meta. <laughs> I found out in Meta, there was a man lived out there by the name of Mr. Purvis Bird. He had three teenage daughters. <laughs> James had locked in on one of them. <laughs> James had locked in on Mary Boy. <laughs> and I don't care where you went. Jane wanted to go to Meta. I said, okay. You know, after a while, I, I, you know, I got to the point, I just stopped. So I'm, I'm not going to ask him where you want to go because I already know what he's going to say. <laughs> he wanted to go to Meta. So I, I took James to Meta, and, and it, uh, that's, that's, when he, that's when he met me. I, you know, I don't know what happened, but when we go down to Meta, we would, all, we would always park, you know, in, in that little, on Main Street. And James and, and his, 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 his uh, his nephew, Roscoe, which is his sister's son, we would all go down there and, and, and we would park the little car and all these little girls, would just, they would just flock around. <laughs> I mean, there was a reason they, they flocked around because James and I and Roscoe, we thought we were cleaner than the Board of Health. <laughs> and the little girls, you know, they come out, they, you know, you see two or three of them gather over here and two or three gather over there. It's in James and, I, uh, James and Roscoe and myself, we would sit at the front of the car and we would talk to each other. We were doing the same thing they were doing. We were trying to entice them and they were trying to entice us. And so finally when James met me, nowhere, nothing in Meta concerned James other than down in Mr. Purvis Bird House. <laughs> I said, okay James, I'll drop you. I'll drop you off in Meta. I'll just keep going where I'm going. But, but you know, to make a long story short, uh, James, we, uh, I, I lost contact with him because um, I graduated high school in 60 and I had lost contact with James and I came back in, in the Atlanta area around 2005 and that's when I made contact with him. He had begun to be a little ill. And so James and another friend of ours, King Solomon Smallwood, we would always meet somewhere, you know, to go out to, go out to uh, uh, dinner. And uh, we had said that, you know, and, and us going out to dinner, we would invite our wives you know, to come with us. Those were our plans. But see, what we didn't know and we didn't understand, in, in um, Proverbs, it says the man of a plan, uh, it says that many of the plans are in a man's heart, but it's only the plan of God that stands. So we didn't understand God's plan. And so when God called his son uh, from table, labor to rest, we had to disband that plan. And so, Mayor, I just want to say to you, darling, I'm going to be respectful. Any time that you need us, we're there. But there's one that's going to do more for you than anybody else. Call on the Lord. He is your answer. Amen. Amen. Thank all of you for your reflections. As the men come in for this selection, I'm going to try to do two things at one time do the selection, and once we finish the selection, the next voice that you will hear will be our spiritual leader, the Reverend Dr. William Rollison, I hear him. sitting here, and I was thinking and looking at this audience and seeing Israel here, married with all what we're going through, God in his infinite wisdom decided to do it this way. And I personally want to say to my friend and brother, our spiritual leader, the Reverend William. One of these old days, Jesus, 
to carry to glory land we shall renew so all of my friends they gonna know me by the smile that I wear Jesus is coming to carry me to glory land to glory land yeah one of these One of these days, Jesus, to carry to glory land, to glory land. Yeah, one of these days, and one of these old days, Jesus, to carry the glory land, glory land, the glory land. Yes, sir. One of these days, yeah. One of these days, yeah. One of these days, yes, sir. One of these days. Come on, come on. Oh, Jesus, He's coming for the preacher, and He's coming for the deacon. For the choir and he's coming for me and you I know that he's coming yes my God is coming I know that he's coming yes I know that he's coming I know that he's coming yes sir one of these days, one of these days, yes, 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 one of these days, yeah. one of these days, oh, Jesus, I said he's coming for the choir. He's coming. My God is coming. One of these days. Oh, one of these old days. Jesus to care to glory land. To glory land. Yeah, one of these days. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, men. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. One of these days, Jesus is coming to carry me to glory land. We give honor to God, our creator, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and his holy spirit for what it has done in all of our lives what it has done in the life of Deacon James Robinson the evidence we all got a chance to witness we also give reverence to all of the ministers here present the pastors I see Pastor John Smith our pastor's brother we give reverence to our late pastor it was him who poured out into us that allowed us just to carry on and do what we do. For cloud of witnesses, thank you for coming out and being here to support this family. And to you, the family, from Sister Mary, the, son, the daughters, we're here as a church family to support you. 
I know your hearts are heavy because this is a loss. But we are confident by the fact we know where he's gone. You may be seated. I promise not to be long. Just a few Baptist minutes. Just a few. Just a few. Let me say this. I was listening to those who came up and gave reflections. And I always, being from the country, I always like to hear about people from the country. Because there's a different dialogue, you know, in the company, in the country. They talk about, yeah, right down the road. The corner posts and all of those things. Oh, little special things, how we call each other. That's all from the country. Let us pray. Eternal and all wise God, we give thanks unto you for the life of Deacon James Robinson, all of the talents and the experiences that you allowed him to have on this earth. Now, oh God, we ask that you now be with the family. Lift them up. Keep them comforted. Let them know that you are in charge. You make the decisions for our coming in as well as our going out. Let them know that just like God loved us so, he sent his only begotten son. God loved his family so much that he placed Deacon James Robinson uniquely with them. So continue to uplift this family and get them through. The scripture says weeping may last for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Now hide your servant behind your cross for a few minutes and allow you, your word to come forward to comfort those who are present. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In 2 Corinthians 5 verses 1 through 4, it says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made by hands, eternal in the heavens. That is what's called God's insurance policy. In Psalms 121 and 8, it says, The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Between that, you got time to get yourself what I call God's insurance policy. See, God has a plan. We all talk about that James uh, was an insurance agent. But what you fail to say was James made sure he had his God's insurance policy to go through life. He knew the need that he needed to have the best policy available. So what I want to talk about to you when I think about James is a man with God's insurance policy. See, James's policy that he got from God, see, God was the insurer. God also was the underwriter. Jesus Christ was the insurance provider. God's Holy Spirit was the insurance agent. And God's Holy Spirit was the one that collected the premiums. You see, when Jesus explain this policy to James. Jesus told James that with this policy you will receive victory over death. This insurance policy 
is called eternal life. In the world, we talk about whole life, term life, universal life. But what he said, this policy is called eternal life. And then he said, I am the only insurance provider. You can only get this insurance through me. And he told James, he said, now, when your earthly dwelling can no longer afford you a home, I have a home eternal in the heavens for you to go. What I'm telling you, James, is this. Those earthly policies have a beneficiary. But this eternal life policy, not only are you the person insured, but you're the person that's the beneficiary. So when it's all done, I got a place for you to go. He said, now, when that mansion is completed, I will come and escort you there. At this time now, until that point, I leave you under the care of the Holy Spirit. My Holy Spirit. You see, having this policy requires that you have the right advisor and counsel. So I'm appointing my Holy Spirit to handle that part of the part. Who has your best interests in mind? Now, when James had his first meeting with God's Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit said to James, paying these policy premiums will not be easy. It requires some commitment. It requires some dedication. It requires some long suffering. You see, Jesus has certified your qualifications for this policy called eternal life. He certified you because of your repentance of worldly sin. Your acceptance of him as the provider in your life. I, the Holy Spirit, over time, will grant you forgiveness, humility, unconditional love, living grace, Kindness, yes, yes, self-control, yeah. and I even teach you effective communication yeah. called the use of prayer. Yeah. You see, this policy has living benefits. Yeah. It allows you to grow in spiritual value. Yeah. This policy don't need no cash yeah. value. Yeah. It has spiritual value right and he said your obligation James is obedience to the word and exercising agape love with everyone you need to treat everybody like you wish to be treated and James with his policy that's what he did Every time you saw him, he had a smile on his face because he knew the Holy Spirit had told him agape love. Then he said, I want you to put a muzzle on kindness on your tongue. Serve righteously. Now that's how James could smile every time that he saw you because when he saw you he wasn't just looking at your clothes your stature and all of that stuff 
What James was looking at was that part of you that God created. That allowed him to treat everybody like he wanted to be treated. Because he was looking at you just like God was looking at you. And the Holy Spirit told him, understand, in this life, you will endure many life experiences. There will be a time to forgive people and let go transgressions. There will be a time to laugh, especially like when you get married. The birth of your children and your grandchildren. The family gatherings. But uh, one thing God told him, I mean the Holy Spirit said, James, while you execute policy, we will have some blessings for you. God allowed him to find himself a soulmate. Mary for, I think what it said there, uh, 57 years. God did that. What does it say in the scripture? When you find a wife, you find a good thing. And when I used to see James, I'd see Mary. You did a good job taking care of James. But that was one of the blessings that God gave James while he was on this side. But as the Holy Spirit was talking to him, the Holy Spirit wanted to remind him, he said there will be a time to cry. There will be a time to shed some tears. As you go through this life, you will have loss. You might lose your parents. You might lose some of your friends. Then he also said there will be time to endure sickness and illness but finally finally there'll be a time to depart your earthly home but as he said when that time comes I got a new home for you a home what they call up above you see, James went around like he knew, I'm going to the home up above. Just the other day, the Lord came to James. And he said, and James, he heard a voice talking to his soul saying, come unto me and rest. See, James' spirit is no longer here in earthly remains. He's at rest up there in his new home. The spirit said unto him, you have fought a good fight. You have finished your course. You have kept the faith. Your purpose Fulfilled. You have now transitioned from earthly life to heavenly life. And he concluded by saying, so servant of God, well done. Rest from your loved employ. The battle fought. The victory won. Enter your master's joy. I'm here to tell you, James would not come back here with us if he could. Where he's at, up above, the land of no more. The land where there's no sickness, no more illness, no more people. To deal with. No more pain. 
James is at rest in the arms of the Lord. And he said if James would do this, if he could, he would write you this letter from heaven. In his letter, he would say, I'm sending you this letter from a place that is better. Heaven is so peaceful. I am so grateful. But just remember, my dears, be happy. No more tears. I know you miss me. But live your life and see. Time goes so fast. Don't waste it being downcast. Be happy for the times we all had together. Don't waste your days by being sad. We will see each other again. And for eternity, we will remain. So fulfill your purpose on earth and you will find in heaven a rebirth. James will want me to say if you're in here and you don't have God's insurance policy, he'd want me to tell you it's the best policy that you can have. Today will be a good time to just ask Jesus to let you get that insurance policy. He's the only agent that can provide it. All you got to do to yourself is confess that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior that you believe that he died on the cross for your sins. That's all you have to do. You ain't got to walk down no church aisle. All you got to do is make your confession with God's insurance provider. If you do that James will tell you this. Until the reunion. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Who giveth us God's insurance policy. Seek a righteous contract and life with God. Through the acceptance of Jesus Christ. And you also will get an eternal life policy. So remember, James is gone up above to a better place. With his insurance policy, he knew where he was going. A lot of us stumble because we don't know where we're going. You just guessing. You might. But I'm telling you, remember James. Because this is time to celebrate his life. A wise person said, the life of the departed lives on in the hearts and minds of the living. Let James live on with you. But you remember this. You need God's insurance policy. Get it like he got it. And live your life so that there's a home waiting for you up above. Amen. And while I'm waiting for the funeral home staff to come in, we have done a resolution of respect. And I'm going to read some of it. It says, no matter what your trials are and how big the mountains seem, the Lord is there to see you through. He'll go to all extremes. He says we are placed in this world for a limited time. And with the breath of the infant begins the race to the grave. A race that 
everyone must run. So whereas the wise providence of Almighty God has brought to a close the life of Deacon James E. Robinson, we the officers and members of the Israel Missionary Baptist Church extend our deepest sympathy to the family upon hearing of his earthly departure. Our prayers of comfort are with you during this trying time. And whereas Deacon Robinson served our church with devout grace and humility for many years and was a member of the deacon's ministry, the male chorus, the James L. Jordan Scholarship Foundation, and the September Birth Month Ministry. Also, he was, as we talked about, an insurance agent, a policy man with God's policy, and received many accolades and traveled around the world during his tenure with the American General Company and other insurance companies. He was a member of the Kiwanis Club of Atlanta and also a blessing to many in his community and almost everyone that he met. Therefore, be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to him who never makes a mistake and remind the family to be encouraged, to stay encouraged, be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be given to the family and a copy kept in our church archives. To the family, in closing, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we are here to share in your sorrow, but more importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's game. Humbly submitted the 16th day of July, year 2021. Again, let's just give a round of applause for the life of Deacon James Robinson, a man who lived righteously and according to God's word. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Let's give God a hand. Listen, I said, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Yo, I ain't clapping over here. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. First, give honor to God and to the middle through grace to Ross and the family having to say thank you for all your consoling words, what you have said to console this family. The family simply say thank you. To the many friends who gathered, the family is also acknowledged you, their appreciation for you come and share it in the past of the one. Whatever you're doing, cut flower, or just simply say a prayer. Your presence here means so much to this family. And for that, this family, thank you. To this family, on behalf of myself and staff, we take this time out to acknowledge to you our appreciation for you chose me your funeral council during your hour of bereavement. And in doing so, we pray to more reflect for the keep it true to one until you meet. Him again, may God bless you. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Did you gather for somebody to come in? You going with listen, you know what this is Deacon, you know what we gotta do? Come on. Look, I got Red Bull in too. Come on, Red, you got you ready? Come on, we got Red Bull. We going we going to church now. We're going to church, all right? Y'all hear that? Yeah. Well, you're gonna sing to him, but we're going to church with the hymn, all right? All right, we don't want the uh, AME. A charge here. Yeah. yeah, well, we want to know that, you know, community church of God, amen, all right? We want the sanctified part of it. Uh, what you gonna sing? Serving God, well, no, you got that? But do you know that song? You know it all right there. Go on and sing. Servant. That's right. Of God. And the victory won. Yes, in the master joy, 
going to skip that second verse <laughs> but listen to that third verse now the pains of death are past labor and sorrow ceased the pain of death of pain Close it there. Do it. His soul is found in peace. I life long. church now listen i told you we're gonna have church in all right all right so we'll have church. anybody gotta go y'all go you know come on now. amen church come on, amen. say amen i got a new home over in zion well it is mine it's mine not all mine come on y'all well i've got a new home Oh, 
the victory over in Zion. Well, it is mine. It's mine, not all mine. Well, I've got the victory. Well, over in Zion. Well, it is mine. It's mine, all mine. Well, I got a new home over in Zion. Yes, sir. And it's mine. It's mine, mine, all mine. Well, I got a new home over in Zion. Well, it is mine. It's mine. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Did y'all like that? Who didn't like it? Raise your hand. Oh, you didn't like it? Oh, you did like it. I was going to say you come up here and sing that. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is, this is a celebration. Isn't it? Celebration. I saw Dory that that somewhere. Well, I guess she'd come in. But listen, I don't make no apology for the type of service I have. Because we have worship service in here. Came for a celebration. This is the place to come down. You want to have a funeral? Then we have a funeral for you, all right? But he was a deacon. And since he was a deacon, we need to take him out the way he wanted to take him All right? So I tell you this again. If you're mad, talk to the devil about it, all right? The one and only. Deacon really walking. I don't know what he knows about talking to the devil. <laughs> Again, let's just thank the Lord for this day. I'm, I'm going to say this. Only the Lord knew that we would live long enough that we would be saying, we now are required to wear masks to go in the bank. I never thought I would ever see that day, but it has come upon us. And now we give on and thanks it's time to go. Will everyone but the immediate family please stand for our benediction? Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, the love of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit. May it rest, rule, and abide, dismiss us from this place. Both now, give us eternal peace, give us protective grace, give us traveling grace, and most importantly, give us living grace, both now and forever. In the master's name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the field for my Lord. Well, I promise him that I would save him. I am on the oh, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on, yeah. Well, I promise. Lord, I would serve him. I am on. Yeah. Well, I got my cross on my shoulder. 
Got a sword in my hand. I'm going to take it on to Jesus in that promised land. Well, then the uh, sun will shine in this little soul of mine. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, I'm on. Yeah. I am on, yeah. Well, the world behind me and heaven in my view. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield. Oh, I'm on the for my Lord. Well, I promise him that I will serve him. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield. For my Lord, well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, I promise him that I, I will serve him. I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Battlefield for my 